But what is really striking, why are these numbers so much higher than in 2016? It's partly because there's been a big surge in university students coming to study, not from the European Union anymore, particularly from India and Nigeria, who've brought huge numbers of dependents, something the government is now trying to restrict. And the second thing is a big rise in work visas. And if you look in the numbers, a huge rise in people getting visas for shortage occupations, in particular in social care. I think over the last two or three years, the number of people getting visas to come and work in social care have gone up from about 3,000 to 100,000. Basically, since the pandemic, huge shortages of nurses and care workers People running care homes can't get staff in Britain. And the government decided, quite controversially actually, to allow a lot of care workers to come from around the world to work in Britain. If not, who would be running our care system? But the irony is, look, we had a referendum in 2016 in which the Brexiteers, including Rishi Sunak, said, vote for Brexit, we'll take back control. And since then, net migration's doubled. Well, I think this goes to, uh, you know, one of the great sort of paradoxes of the Brexit campaign. The leaders of Brexit, uh, and people like Rishi Sunak, who were Brexit supporters, they they represented a very small group who thought that Brexit was really an opportunity to have a more liberal, more open, more capitalist economy, to free themselves from EU red tape. And they would say, by the way, if we get to control immigration, we can actually bring more people into the country. And that's a good thing. Right. And I'm by the way, I'm, I'm also pro-immigration. But of course, they won that campaign by uh, creating a link between issues of sovereignty, who was in control of the country, and borders, uh, with that famous slogan, take back control. And the vast majority of people who voted Brexit were voting for less migrants, fewer migrants to come into the country. And I think they would be surprised to know that since voting for Brexit, the number of people coming into the country has doubled. I have to say, I find this quite a difficult topic politically because my sympathies are all for pro-immigration. I think it brings diversity to our country. It means we don't have the debate they're having in places like Japan about a shrinking population. Um, it's make our economy more productive. But you know, I am very acutely aware that that's not where a lot of the instincts of the country are. And I've always thought it interesting in my encounters with you that you take a more kind of classically I don't want to say right wing because I don't think it's fair, but sort of more sceptical of immigration view. And that might be informed by the fact, you know, you were fighting a constituency in West Yorkshire where immigration was a big issue. The BMP, I think, had the biggest local party of any constituency. Um, and so I'm always a bit nervous that my political instincts on this aren't quite right. I think like you, immigration has been a huge benefit to our economy and society over over hundreds of years. In the end, that's why we all arrived in this country. And you know, the 80s were an aberration, an unusual period when you didn't have the need for change and skill and people coming to, to work here. But the thing I learned in Morley and Outwood um, in that constituency was, one, you've got to talk about it and you've got to explain why you're doing what you're doing. And then secondly, you've got to show that you've got a grip that it is under control. After you'd made a commitment to have a referendum on the European Union, you, David Cameron, said, I'm going to go and get a deal with our European Union partners to control migration better, to, to have some constraints on free movement. And I think that was the right thing to do myself. I always worried um, as Europe got larger that we weren't going to be able to make free movement um, work for a, a, um, a union of a enlarging scale. And the things he was talking about were the right things to go in after. But unfortunately, he didn't get what he set out to get in terms of reform and change. Then you had a referendum anyway. You didn't talk about migration much in the campaign because you thought we could win the referendum on the economic risk of losing the, leaving the European Union. And I think that was a big risk and I was agreeing with you. But I tell you, loads of people across the country thought, I know but what I'm worried about is migration and immigration and free movement. And if they're not talking about it, then they're not letting me in on what's really going on. And it was that sort of worry and that denial which fed the um, Brexit vote, which no, is why it's so ironic we're in the position we're in now. I remember you phoning me 
uh, a week or two before that referendum and saying, you know, all of us on the Remain side need to be talking about immigration more. Uh, so that immigra- the immigration is obviously critical to the result. Uh, the country votes to leave. So you no longer have this free movement. Uh, but I come, you know, I fast forward to today where you've now got twice as many people as back then coming in, over 600,000 people. And and you've got people in the Conservative Party saying that's way too many. Uh, you've got Sweller Bravman in a resignation letter recently saying that it's got to be cut. But I come back to the central question, which I think faces both the Conservatives and will face Labour if they're in government, which is, OK, fine. So what you want? Fewer people working in the care homes. You want fewer people working in the economy. You want fewer students at universities. No government has ever been prepared to say yes to those things. And so either you need to level with the public that these levels of immigration are good for Britain, good for the economy, good for local economies too, good for schools, good for hospitals, because by the way, they're providing a lot of the staff who work in these institutions. Either we all need to level up and say, look, I'm sorry, you know, I disagree with you, a uh, uh, voter. This is a good thing and we're going to explain why. Or we're going to have to come up with some radically different plan to run our country and run our economy. Look, I agree. And that is why you've got to own it as a government. You can say right now, there are some particular one-offs around Hong Kong and Ukraine, and but they will go down. You can say, though, it's good to have students come, although there is going to be restrictions on dependence. But you have to level with people. If you think the right thing to do is to have lots and lots of people coming from abroad to do low-paid jobs, which British people aren't taking, you've got to say that. And if you don't want to have those numbers coming, then what you've got to do is increase the pay of care home staff. But if you say, well, you know, we're not going to increase the pay of care home staff and not quite sure why this has happened and I'm really worried about it and why are these numbers so big and what's gone there on? Even if we, you increase we, the pay of care home staff, there would not be enough people in Britain who want to do those jobs. Well, I think that is we've got, um, we've got that, close that, to we've got almost full employment. You know, we've got we've got unemployment is the lowest it has been in our lifetimes. So it's not that there are a load of Brits. I mean, there's a big issue which we can come back to, which you actually mentioned in the hot take episode of people on disability benefits, people on various sickness benefits. Uh, so there are a lot of Brits who aren't working, but they're not in the workplace looking for jobs in care homes. Anyway, I think, you but know, if you, yeah, but if you look across the economy, why is it the case that we've got a shortage of occupation called care home workers, but we haven't got a shortage of occupation of retail workers? And the answer is because if you go and work in a care home, a very, very difficult, sensitive job, you get paid less than if you go and work in retail. And if you don't face up to that, then, OK, you then have to say we're going to do it by migration from abroad. But you've got to be honest. If people think you're not being honest, if people think that you are not facing up to it, if you're not talking about it, if it, they feel as though you've lost control, you're out of control, that is when you lose the immigration argument. And that is the danger for the government at the moment. So my view is, you know, take back control, get a grip, own the system. And if you think these numbers are too high, do something about it. Mm-hmm.